Dancers, what's up? Hello, welcome to class. Today's class is focused for pole dancers, aerial dancers, anyone who's got to use a lot of grip strength to pull themselves up on their apparatus. What I tend to notice a lot in aerial, in the aerial world, pole, silks, lira, whatever, is that when it comes to like wrist care or elbow care or like arm care, especially in the realm of like warming up, it's really limited and kind of basic to just, eh, you know, just do some, some stretches, you know. <laughs> There's not really a ton of like wrist stabilization, elbow stabilization, and our warm-ups tend to be very focused on stretching. And what happens is that we run the risk of getting injuries, getting pain like tennis elbow, where there's an inflammation of the tendons that attach here from the forearms at the, at the elbow joint here. We run the risk of um, getting like shoulder impingement injuries or just feeling like this sense of chronic tightness in our upper shoulders here and maybe like some knots in our back and wrist soreness where you just feel like, oh man, like my wrist just really hurt, like I can't pull it away on them or maybe you tweak them doing like an Aisha or something where you're putting a lot of strain on your wrist, right? Like we use our, muscle, our, our hands so much for that grip strength. So today's class is an active mobility warm up to stabilize the wrist, elbow, and shoulders before class so that all the muscles are on and working and we can prevent injuries, we can prevent tweaking all of these really important joints as we're pulling ourselves and flipping around and doing all these things. What tends to be the biggest cause of pain specifically in these three joints is one, that we don't have stability in our wrists. Our wrists are kind of weak. Um, they don't, they're not as stable as they could be. And two, we aren't activating and building a lot of strength in our mid back, specifically this area below the scapula, our lower trapezius, our lats, our serratus muscle here in the back. And what tends to happen is that these muscles here in our neck and shoulders get really overworked. We're just like, ugh, pulling, and our elbow joint can get strained. So the magic combo here is going to be activating our back body and strengthening up our wrists for stability. So ultimately, what I want to focus on here, guys, you're going to want a band. You're going to need like a TheraBand, something relatively stretchy for this class. Is while we're moving through this, we want to make sure that we are retracting our shoulders. We do not want any winging, okay? What I see a lot is people moving their arm from a place where their shoulder blade is not anchored to the ribs. It's kind of, you know, <laughs> maybe winging off or hunching, like it's just kind of all over the place. We need to be anchoring that scapula down. So think of your scapula, find that like winged hip, the bottom of that, and then think about drawing that forward and pressing it, pulling it towards the ribs as your shoulder, this head of your shoulder, your humerus bone, is pulling back, okay? So we wanna be building strength from this place where we are really, you know, active through our back body instead of just like this, okay? So we want to think about that scapula tip here instead of winging out, drawing in. See how that draws my, my shoulder back? This is also gonna help you get some more openness across the chest here, across the heart, more flexibility here. So. Let's dive in, grab your band, set it aside for a moment. We're gonna begin with a wrist mobility warm up. So bring your elbow into the side, hold onto your forearm so that you can't be moving around here. We're just isolating from the wrist. Shoulders back, fingers together, begin to circle that right hand and find what is your wrist's true mobility without moving your forearm? How big can you make that circle? Tuning into your body, and then circle the other way, keeping those fingers together, trying to stop your form from, from moving around here. Oh yeah. Shoulders back, tall spine. And across the board in the whole dance world, we want to try and move away from just stretching 
as our form of warming up and our only form of cross training. Building mobility and strength is actually the better thing to do. Sometimes that sense of tightness that we get, we feel like, oh, I'm so tight, I'm so sore, actually is coming from weakness and instability rather than a lack of flexibility. Sometimes too much flexibility is not a good thing and can lead to more tightness, actually. Let's do the other side, elbow in, shoulder back, grab that forearm, fingers together, and circle. This is a great little exercise to do before you get on your apparatus, whatever it may be. Mobilize the wrist and switch directions. Really isolating, like don't cheat here and let your circle the wrists on the way down. All right, coming onto your uh, tabletop here. Now, practice not sinking into those shoulders. So instead of being here, hanging out, see how my scapula are winging, really retract, press into the floor, ground, pull those scapula bones forward towards your ribs as you open up through the shoulder. We're gonna do that three times. One, two, three, mobilizing the shoulder. Plugging your fingertips into the floor, find a sense of lift, not locking into your elbows. You're going to begin to wrist, to lift your wrists off the floor. So little pulses here. Making sure you're not just like slamming into those joints. Make this controlled and smooth. You want to be smooth and controlled here. So we're not just like locking into our joints, but actually building some strength in all of the little muscles in the hands and the wrists that build that stability. Five, four, three, two, one. Maybe starting to feel those forearms activate. Let's take a plank here. Knees off the ground and again, find that shoulder mobilization. So sink and then protract. Press. Don't lock into those elbows. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, let's move through these forearms and then pressing, like really plug your fingertips into the floor, activate that whole hand, roll that shoulder back so you're not rounding here, press up. Keep your core in. These are great for warming up your wrists. As long as you are making sure you're not just collapsing and then as you press back up, locking through the joints, okay? Keep that micro bend, keep that sense of lift through the shoulders. Let's do four each side, okay? Really be mindful here. Moving slowly, pull your belly button up towards your spine. Use the whole hand here, plug those fingers in, roll that shoulder back. Look at your belly button, make sure it's pulling in. Press. Last one. Beautiful. Now grab your band. We're gonna do a nice wrist stretch in right here. So you want to create a loop with your band that's gonna go under your foot. Basically trying to find a good, a little bit, strong. A good balance is what we're going to do is rest that elbow on your leg. Roll that shoulder back. No hunching and crunching here. Think, draw that point of your scapula forward. To roll that shoulder back. What you're going to do is use your other hand to assist you. Pull back and then slowly lower back. Find that good balance for your leg. Oh yeah. That's enough resistance. So you want to create a loop here. Core in, shoulder back. All right, so hand flip, slowly lower. Flip. If you don't have a band, you could also use a small weight here or a can of soup in your hand. 
So pull, find that full flexion, and then slowly lower down, okay? Slow. Building stability, we're not just trying to flop back and forth here. Stretch, hold, slowly lower. All right, let's go. Five. We don't need a ton here. Four. Just enough to activate that grip strength. Three. Little micro bend in the elbow too. We're not trying to just 
lock into our joints to do this, okay? So we want to really work the muscles. So shoulders down, scapula wrapping forward, shoulders back, and let's do 15, 14. We're working our active flexibility here, so you might even feel a little bit of a stretch across the chest. We're definitely working those pecs. 13. Twelve, and slowly resisting back. Don't just let the band snap, okay? Eleven. Ten. Keep those wrists straight. Shoulders down. No rounding. Nine. Eight. Oh yeah, let's go. Seven. Six. Five. Four, slow it down, check in with those shoulders, keep them flat. Three, two, woo, one, nice job y'all. So once you've done that, you should be good and warm and then we can do a nice little fascia, kind of nerve flossy stretch here to get you ready for class. So what you're gonna do is reach that right arm out in a diagonal, like really reach it out. It's not just hanging out, active. Let your head drop to the opposite side. Reach, 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 active through those fingers. We're gonna rotate the palm to face forward. And then from the wrist, flex to reach those fingers back until you get, <laughs> you'll probably feel the sensation from your finger all the way up through the hand, all the way up to that ear. Breathe into it for a moment. And again, even here, no rounding. Check in, bring your hand to that opposite scapula. Can you keep it open without rounding and dropping? Can you bring your hand behind, make sure it's staying flat. And then open and close that wrist a couple times, or that is those fingers. shoulder back, keep it open, flip the palm to face forward, flex from the wrist, reaching those fingers behind and breathe. Breathing through the finger all the way up through that arm if you're feeling like a burning, tingly sensation, it's because we are contacting the nerve and your fascia as well. So we're gonna close, open, open, So you should be feeling really good, open, and activated. A little warm up. Save this so that you can revisit this before you do any kind of aerial practice. This way, all of your muscles are going to be activated. You're going to be way stronger, and you're going to be preventing injuries at the same time. And I also have a aerial dancer cool down also on my channel. So this is good to do before that, like active stretching. And then as you cool down, if you want to get into the more of the, the flowy, stretchy, chill kind of a movement, that's perfect for after class. So we want to distinguish what kind of stretching we're using before class. In this case, like active. We want to get the muscles warm. We want to awaken the muscles that we're actually going to be using in our class. And then afterwards is when, yeah, it feels good to like stretch and reset. Now, if you like learning about the body, if you like learning about the different kinds of stretching, anatomy, alignment, how to move your healthiest, if you're ready to kind of just get off any plateau that you may be on and get onto the next level of strength, flexibility, mobility, and power in your dancing, if you just want like that edge, that clean, polished, mm, well, extra spice in your dancing and you're ready to really understand how your body works so that you can accelerate that progress faster. If you're ready to like understand the science of movement, the science of mobility and how to essentially biohack your body, biohack your nervous system, your fascia system, your muscular skeletal system to be able to overcome some of those physical limitations that might be blocking you from being the best dancer that you can be, then this is exactly what kind of work we do in my pro 
program, Yoga for Dance Academy. We go super, super deep from your feet to your face and everything in between to understand how you can build strength, how to understand your body, how to move in an injury preventive way while also leveling up your technique and your skill. So it's like two in one for your healthiest, most powerful dancing body. And we also do a lot of work to not only uncover the root causes of your physical limitations, but any mental blockages as well that are keeping you stuck in self-sabotaging patterns. I think dancers struggle a lot with things like imposter syndrome, self-doubt, perfectionism, people pleasing, just limiting beliefs about themselves that stop them from like really going for it and really like being that person who attracts the opportunities that you really want. So this is all covered in depth in the 90 days of Yoga for Dance Academy, blending of the physical, mental, and energy body to create the reality that you really want to live in. Regulate your nervous system and prevent injuries while becoming the strongest dancer possible. If that sounds like it's right up your alley, the waitlist is now open for the next round starting February 2022. I will put a link to all the info for the whole program down below and you can check out some testimonials from past clients who have done the program and come out of it absolutely thriving, getting new jobs, overcoming injuries and pain, moving in an entirely new way and having a totally new outlook and level of confidence in their life. As always guys, find me on Instagram for more dancer yoga wellness content. Would love to connect with you and see if you need any support with anything. I'm always making new classes, taking new requests for things that you want help with. So would love to connect and find you on there. Hope you enjoyed this little class and I'll see you soon.